Hi everyone. Let's begin first by preparing a new scene here on 3ds Max and setting up our preferences. Since I know I'll be modeling this object as a candidate for 3D printing at Shapeways, I need to be sure I'm modeling everything to real-world scale. I'll be using millimeters as both my display and system units. Grid spacing won't play a role here, but system unit scale will have a major impact on the accuracy of the model once it's exported from Max to whatever build preparation software or maker service you might be using. That said, let's jump right into modeling the object. Under Extended Primitives, we'll click on Hedra and bring a Hedra shape into the scene. We'll change the family parameter to Dodecaikos and the Q parameter to 1.0. Down here in Radius, we'll adjust the radius to 30.0 millimeters. And that'll give us this nice dodecahedron here in the scene. Right click on it and change it to editable poly right off the bat. You can tap F4 to toggle between edged faces. Tap 2 on the keyboard to bring us into our edge sub-object mode. Control A to select all. And tap 2 on the keyboard to exit edge mode. Hold down shift on the keyboard. And up here in the graphite modeling ribbon, click on tessellate. And that'll bring up the caddy. We'll change our tessellate type from edge to face. And accept that result. Alright, now we'll tap 2 to go back down to edge level, and you'll see that our edge selection, our previous edge selection, is still available. Alright, hold down control on the keyboard and tap the backspace button, and that'll remove those edges along with the vertices. Okay. Control A to select all, hold down shift, and bring up the chamfer cat caddy. Right, we'll use a standard chamfer type and we'll change the chamfer amount to be 2.5 millimeters. And we'll accept that result. Tap 4 on the keyboard to go to polygon level. Select one of the new polygons formed by the chamfer. One of these larger quad selections here. Select similar to grab all of them and then go ahead and delete and that'll leave us with this this cage here. Okay. Alright, let's uh, go back down to our edge level and you'll see that that edge selection is still retained. Hold down shift and bring up your connect caddy. And we'll give that connection five segments. And we'll accept that result. All right, now back in polygon mode, we'll go ahead and select one of the uh, pentagons at the center. And again, select similar to grab it all. And then over here in the uh, command panel rollout, we'll drop down the soft selection rollout. And then we'll enable soft selection. We'll change the fall off parameter to 15 millimeters, 15.0. And then we'll tap E on the keyboard to bring up the rotate gizmo. Make sure the coordinate system is set to local. And then down here at the bottom, click this button to engage the offset mode transform type in. In the Z parameter, go ahead and type in a value of 45 and just hit enter. 
and then it'll give us this result here. Tap R on the keyboard to bring up the scale gizmo. Your reference coordinate system should be set to view, but we'll need to change the pivot point to use selection center. All right, and make sure you're using select and uniform scale. Then you can come down here and type 55 into the scale parameter and that'll give us this result here. Go ahead and disable the use soft selection and we'll select a triangle face this time. Again, we'll use select similar to capture all of them. Over here in the control panel, underneath your selection rollout, click the grow button five times and that'll grow that selection until you have something like this. All right. So we'll switch over to our rotate gizmo and we'll make sure that we're in local uh, coordinate system and using the pivot point centers. All right. And then we'll down here in the uh, uh, panel at the bottom in the offset panel, we'll type in negative 60 degrees in the Z parameter and hit enter. All right, and that'll give us this result here. All right, so now we'll switch to our edge level and we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll select two of the edges as part of these emanating arms that are coming from the uh, pentagons at the center of the object. Select two of the edges. Again, go to select similar to grab all of them around the entire object. And hold down shift on the keyboard and bring up the connect caddy again. This time we'll change the segment amount from five to three. And we'll accept that. So now we have three segments cut in. All right, we'll go back to our polygon level. And we'll select a pentagon in the center here. Again, go to select similar. And then uh, once you have all of those selected, we'll enable our soft selection again. And this time we'll change the fall off radius to 8.0 millimeters. And then down here, um, we'll rotate this 25 degrees on the z-axis. And that'll give us this result. Okay. So now we can select uh, one of the triangle polygons. Again, select similar grab all of them and then we'll change the uh, soft selection fall off this time to use 20 millimeters and then we'll change it to use our scale gizmo and we'll make sure our reference coordinate system is set to view and use selection centers and then we'll come down here and we'll scale that down to about 80%. All right, and that'll give us this result. Okay. So now we could uh, change our soft selection fall off once again, this time to, oh, I don't know, 5.0 millimeters and we'll select one of the pentagons again and once again select similar and then down here we'll give this an offset of 90 percent all right all right so now we can disable soft selection and 
end. This is pretty much our object here. All right, but the next thing we need to do here is go ahead and add a shell modifier. By default, it uses the outer amount. We'll spin that all the way down to zero. And we'll go with an inner amount of anywhere between 1.8 to around 2.3 millimeters. Um, I'll go with 2.0, see how that looks. Let me just zoom in here and make sure that, uh, now you'll see when I zoom in using two millimeters, 2.0, that there is some intersection happening here of the edges, but not to worry about that because we'll be using uh, some subdivision and that'll, uh, that should smooth it out there. All right, so down here at the bottom of the shell modifier, you could tick the select edges option. All right, and that'll set us up for the next step, which is another edit poly modifier on top of that. Now, at this point, it's up to you how you want to continue. If you want to, you could uh, go ahead to your polygon level, and you'll see that the selection you made in the uh, shell modifier is available. And at this point, you could inset that selection and create uh, crease, creases that way for the subdivision. Or if you're using, uh, as I am now, uh, 3ds Max, I don't know, anywhere from 2015 to 2017, you should have the new open subdiv modifier available with the crease modifier. So I think in this instance, we'll try that. So now with this select, with the, uh, with these polygons selected, hold down shift on the keyboard and actually click on the edge selection option here in the command panel. And that will change the, uh, the polygon selection to an edge selection, just the edges that are bordering those selected polygons. Now, if we had, uh, if we had this selection and we held down control and went to our edge, you see what would happen. It would select uh, all of those edges that are associated with that polygon selection. So instead, we'll hold down Shift, and that will just select those edge loops. All right, so from here, we'll add a crease modifier. And after that, an open subdiv modifier. And we'll give the open subdiv at least two iterations, but if we're exporting it for 3D print, I'd probably go with three. All right, so we'll come back down in the crease modifier and we'll just play with that a little bit until we're happy with the result and how it looks. Okay, so as you can see, 0 0.2, it doesn't, uh, now we do have some intersection here, so I'll drop that back just a little bit to 0 0.1, and that will keep it from intersecting. All right. And that is basically it. And this is your object. Now remember, if you collapse all this to export, uh, as an OBJ or an STL, make sure you disable the isoline display um, because when you go to collapse, it will collapse with the isoline and that will give you a very poor result. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Um, this is a pretty nice object to uh, play around with. All right, a lot more, it looks a lot more complicated than the technique to create it, obviously. So uh, please, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.